Hello, everyone. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Hello, Asmita Ji. Kaise ho? Wait, 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 wait for a second, sir. Huh?
Hello. Can you see me now? Yes. Hello, Smita Ji. How are you? I'm I'm going to. Okay, let's begin our class. Sit up straight, nice and tall on your mat. <clears throat> and close your eyes. And make any mudra of your wish. Keep your spine straight and bring that awareness on your breath and the posture you are in. So we will begin our class with three ohms together. Take a deep breath in. Oh. 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 Feel the vibration and effect of the Om chanting. Join your hands together in front of your heart center. Bow your head down and then open your eyes while blinking. And Namaste to everyone. <laughs> So day before yesterday, what we talked about, we talked about the posture of back bend, and we also talked about the life of the uh, C, warrior B and warrior A. So today we are going to talk about whatever you are going to tell me. So what do you want me to? So let's discuss about any posture that you want to learn. Any posture? Okay, let's talk about downward facing dog and the mountain. 
So what happens in the downward facing dog and the mountain? Do you know the difference between both of them? I have a question. Why do you call it mountain? So that is going to be our first question. Mountain. Why we call this mountain? Yeah, versus down dog, because mountain right here is uh, just standing. This is mountain. Yeah, it's, it's mountain in Western, but uh, in Hatha Yoga, we have Parvatasan. This is called mountain. Parvatasan. Do you know the Parvatasan? Do you know Parvatasan? Do you know Parvatasan? How do we perform that posture? Yeah, I, I sorry, Sarov, I can't understand you. What was your answer? Are there two mountains or is mountain and down dog, are they exactly the same? No, no, no. So that, that's what we are going to learn. What's the difference between both of them? Oh, okay. Okay. So, as you said, we have a standing mountain pose and we have also mountain pose as same as like a downward facing dog. Okay. So both look same, but there is a huge difference between both of them. So, okay. you may have done uh, Hatha Sun Salutation. Have you tried before? Yeah. Yeah, on, on Saturday we learned that. Yeah. So, we learn about... Chandra Namaskar, we learn about Asu Sanchalana, mountain, then drop in each chest, sit down. Chandra Namaskar. Then we can use this one again. See? We also did uh, Cobra poses, right? Warrior Seas. So these, those were the post postures we discussed. They were coming. How much the Come here. Okay. So let's get our body warmed up. We will go further. Okay. So let's start with a little joint movement and then we'll go further for the tabletop. Much a little warm up salutation. Then we'll discuss about the facing top and the mountain. Uh, do we have variations in downward facing dog? Yes, we'll, we'll make variation. variation. Uh, like downward facing dog is also knee bent or straight knees or exactly yeah. mountain. So, are these the three variations or we have more? Yeah, it, it all depends on the flexibility of your hip flexor. It all depends on the flexibility of your hamstring. If you have, if you do not have enough flexibility on your hamstring or on your butt, so you are always supposed to bend your knees. Right? So, the purpose is to get your hips high. The more it gets high, the more extension you will find on your spine. And then spinal extension get more easier. You can always bend your knees in the downward facing dog too. Okay, let's warm up first, then we'll go further. Okay. Now come up on the tabletop. <coughs> now rotate your arms slight outward and then lean forward, press your fingertips on the floor. Press your fingertips on the floor and then lean forward. Keep your hands straight. Lean forward. Keep leaning. Keep leaning. Keep leaning, keep leaning, Just keep moving forward, moving forward with the arms straight. Three, squeeze into your butts. Two, and then one. Inhale, back. Exhale, again, lean forward, press your palms on the floor. So, can you show? Because our screen oh, is very small, is so it is like. Like very first time you can show, then you can come back and sit. <laughs> okay, so we'll do the same. Press your hands and then lean forward. Keep leaning, press your hands and then hold three. So at the same time, you are going to engage your abdomen, your butt, or your chest. On your mat, on the tabletop, 
And then again, press your palms, lean forward, keep leaning, roll your shoulders back, exhale, move back. Now again, press your palms, squeeze into your butts, lean forward, keep leaning, and then hold five, pull your arm muscles back, four, good job, three, two, and then one again, move your hip back to the center. Exhale, again, press your palms, and then lean forward, and then again, hold, five, four, three, keep pressing your hands, two, and then one, move your hip back, and then relax. Now, shake your hands, shake your wrist. After this, turn your palms in. Finger is pointed back towards the knee. In this position. And then move your hip back, press your hands on the floor, keep looking forward. Just keep looking forward, palms turn in. Just palms turn in. And then hold five, four, three, two, and then one again. Lean forward, lean forward, and then lean back. Press your fingertips on the floor. Move your hip back on your heel. And then again, hold there. Five. Move your hip back. Very nice. Four. Three, two, and last one. Inhale and then exhale. Release your hands down. Now shake your hands. Now make a diamond with your both palms like this or like hands together. And then press your hands on the floor. Again, tabletop. And then lean forward again. Press your palms. Lean forward. Keep leaning forward. Press your fingertips and resi resist this action. And then hold five, four, very nice, three, two, and then one. Inhale back to the center. Keep your hands as it is. Exhale. Again, lean forward. Press your wrist on the floor. And then pulling your arm muscles back. Again, push your hip forward and then hold five. Four, three, two, and then one. Inhale back to the center and then exhale. Release your hands and then take your hand. Move your wrist around. Now again, find yourself on the tabletop. Send your legs back for the flank. Drop your knee chest in on the floor. Inhale, swing yourself forward for the cobra or bhujangasana. Exhale, roll back for the mountain or downward facing dog. So this is your downward facing dog. It can be downward facing dog or it can be mountain. So what is the difference between both of them? In both of them, your hips are high. Or uh, do you know the puppy extent? Extend, extend, extension pose. Do you know the puppy extension? How do we stretch our shoulders in that posture? Yes. Upward yes. external reach. Yes. Abdomen on, sorry, uh, your chest on the floor, knees on the floor, and arms extended forward. That is puppy extend, extension. Okay, so this is your puppy extension as you are here in the puppy. So when you grow old, that then you become dog. Okay, so your your spinal extension should be as same as like your puppy extension in the downward facing dog. Understood? So in the downward facing dog, you have a nice arch on your back without any shoulder impingement. But if you are making your spine straight, if you if you do not have enough flexibility. And then you are supposed to do always the mounted pose. Have you got me? What do I mean here? 
एक्सटेंशन में दिस चिन इट हिट्स द फ्लोर हाँ यू प्रेस वे हाउ डू यू कीप योर फेस जी अपना फेस आगे भी कर सकते हो यू कैन कीप योर फेस इन फ्रंट और यू कैन टक योर हेड इन ओके सो व्हेन यू आर टकिंग योर हेड इन एट द टाइम यू आर एंगेजिंग दैट बंदाज यू आर लॉकिंग दैट बंदाज तो उस टाइम आप ऐसे कर सकते हो अदरवाइज यू कैन प्रेस योर हैंड्स ऑन द फ्लोर लुक इन फ्रंट बट मेक श्योर यू आर नॉट रोटेटिंग योर आर्म्स आउटवर्ड सो दिस इज अ दिस इज अ लाइक इट प्लेस अ इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू आर रोटेटिंग योर आर्म्स इनवर्ड देन यू विल कोलैप्सिंग थ्रू योर शोल्डर ब्लेड्स right so you won't be engaged anymore so you have to rotate your arms outward always press your wrist on the floor from the outer edge of your palm if you are pressing from the inner edge of your palm then you will start to rotate so let's do it together and then understand come up on the table top just come up on the table top and feel like where you are shifting your body weight on the outer edge of your palm right press your outer edge of your palm on the floor outer edge of your palm yes no 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 from the table top from the table top press your palms on the floor okay and then tuck your toes under move your hips high for the downward facing dog yes move your hips high so the moment when you bend your knees the moment when you bend your knees you feel like your hips are moving more higher than before just look at each other hips on the screen then you can see just try and look at each other when you are bending your knees you will feel like your hips are getting more higher than before i can't look at the screen and do it too what what do you want me to do no nothing 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 let's do let's do okay so as you are in the downward facing dog you have to bend your knees and reach your hips high Yeah. But what yes. is, is that different from mountain? Yes, yes. Let let me tell you. So in the downward facing dog, your spine should be extended forward. Means you going to lower your chest slide down, lower your chest slide down, bend your knees, bend your legs at the knee, and heels up, heels high, heels high, heels high, heels high, and then hips also up towards the ceiling. Yes. So this is going to be a downward facing dog. but make sure your hands are pressed down all the way on the floor from the outer edge of your palm okay so this is your downward facing dog in which you can also make an arch you can also make arch on your back just look at me here once once look at me here then you will understand so this is a copy extended extended pose in which you lower your chest down right so it's more like a puppy So what what is happening in this posture? So you are having the extension on your shoulders. You are having the extension on your spine. Your hips are still up towards the ceiling, right? The same way you have to just press your hands on the floor, tuck your toes under, and then reach your hips high. So this is your downward facing dog. Or you keep your heels on the floor, press your hands, and then lower your chest down, tuck your head in or out as per your comfort. But in the mountain, you should be stable. You should be more engaged here, and then you will be more relaxed. In the downward facing dog, you can always look at it. Open up your legs, bend your knees, reach your hips high, lower your chest down. But in mountain, you keep your hands like this, and then fold. Okay. So what happens in the mountain? It will be all the way straight from the peak of the top point. Okay. But in the downward facing dog, you can make slight arch on your back like this. But in the mountain, it will be straight forward. But in the downward facing dog, you always open up your legs. In the mountain, you always keep your legs together. Okay. And uh, the placement of the palms are almost same. But in the Hatha Yoga Sun Salutation, when you are doing mountain pose, your fingers should be together. But in the downward facing dog, your fingers should be Apart. Oh, brother. Sorry, can you okay. show us where your fingers are for mountain? Like that triangle you had us do? No, no, no. In oh. the mountain, your hands should be like. But in the downward facing dog or any vinyasa, rashtanga vinyasa, you can always keep your hands or fingers wide apart.
Why would you do the two different poses? Uh, the why, why would you do mountain instead of down dog? See, uh, in the mountain, you're having that extension from the top of your palm, so, sorry, from your bottom of your palm to your hip and hip to your heel, right? You're having that stretch all the way out. But in the downward facing dog, that comes into your extension of the spine. Extension of the spine means a little back bend. But in the mountain, we don't have back bend. But in the downward facing dog, we have back bend. Why is it so? So you can see that uh, puppy extension. What happens? Puppy and down dog, they both are same, right? So they are doing back bend a little. Right. In the downward sure. dog and the puppy extension too. When puppy grows old, older, then it becomes dog. So, so you should be like getting that extension on your spine. If you do not get the ex extension on your spine, it will be more like a mountain pose. Okay. So, so but, but make sure your shoulders should not be in, uh, should, shoulders should not be collapsed. If they are rotating inward, so what actually happens in the downward facing dog when you try to get that extension or arch on your back, you always forget to rotate your arms outward. That usually happens. So this is the tendency of our body. Whenever you're making arch, your arms will start to rotate in. Let's suppose you're taking your hands up. Take your hands up. Take your hands up. So when you're going back, what you're going to do, you will not rotate your arms outward. You will rotate them in. So this is the internal rotation. This is the outer rotation, right? So you have to maintain this outer rotation, but we cannot maintain until unless we practice or we have enough, like a uh, good muscle memory. Understood? So let's suppose, so this is the internal rotation. This is the external rotation. In the downward facing dog, we need to have that external rotation. Yes. External rotation, external, external, it's like this. Like pinky finger reaching up, pinky finger reaching up, pinky finger reaching up, and then reach high. No, 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 it, this is the internal, this is the external. Rotate like this. This is external. This is internal, this is external to the side. Yes. So we're trying to get our this shoulder is, blades apart from each other, right? Yeah, the shoulder blades apart from each other. Yes, apart from each other, you can say. So here, when you are, the moment when you start to rotate your arms outward, you'll be more engaged from here, right? This is all the way like uh, ultimately connecting to each other. So we're supposed to engage this part. How are you going to engage? The moment when you take your hand up and you start to rotate outward. If you do not rotate that outward, you won't be finding that engagement. Okay. This is internal rotation, uh, Karen. This is internal rotation. This is outer rotation. Yes, this is outer rotation. Now from there, See, see, from there, just look at look at me here, Karen. From here, you need to turn your palms forward. Turn your palms forward only. Yes. So outer rotation should come from your bottom of your shoulder. Top of your humer humerus bone. From the shoulder, shoulder socket. You bring your triceps closer to your ears and down for dog, right? Triceps no, no. closer to your ears. Yes, 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 yes. Triceps closer to ear. Okay, let's do it again. If your scapulas are coming together, if you're making one straight line between your scapulas, and that means you are doing again wrong. Just open up your chest. Just bring that engagement on your arms. And pull your lower belly in. And try to bring your thighs close to your abdomen so that your hip will get more higher. And then release into the tabletop. 
Okay, let's talk about the mountain. So uh, you may already know about the mountain, like how it should be. It should be stable. It cannot move. It uh, it has a tendency to be stable. So you have to be stable in the mountain. You don't have to move at in the mountain pose. But in the downward facing dog, when we are going for the variation, or sometimes we pedal out our legs, right? Sometimes we uh, give your body jerk in order to get that extension over here, right? So in the downward facing dog, you, you can move, but in the mountain, you should be all the way stable, right? Okay. So this is also Parvatasan. So this is mountain pose. Uh, that is also mountain pose. Okay, have you understood? What is the difference between mountain and downward facing dog? So let's suppose you're doing mountain pose, bring your heels together. And yes. The moment when you press your heels on the floor, you will feel like you're going to be more engaged with your butts, right? Press your, press your heels on the floor in the mountain so that you won't lose your energy. So do you know about the bandhas? You're just engaging here, mool bandha. When you're pressing your heels on the floor, just engaging your butts, press your hands and be stable here. No movement. And keep your fingers together, press your hands on the floor. So there we don't need to have that external rotation, internal rotation. You can keep your hands uh, into the neutral position. A little outer rotation is fine, but internal rotation is not supposed to be done. Okay, so let's go for the downward facing dog. So until unless you spend your time, like spend five minutes, six minutes in the posture or practice, until, until then you won't understand the posture's alignment, okay? So we'll practice together. Now let's go for the downward facing dog. Now lift your heels off the floor. Bend your legs at the knee, reach your hips high, press your palms on the floor and close your eyes and bring that awareness on your scapulas, on your shoulder blades, on the shoulder socket. Rotate your arms outward. You can make a little arch on your back and reach your hips high. The purpose is to get your hips high up towards the ceiling. Reach as high as possible. Both badia. Asmila ji, keep trying. Both badia. And after you can also tuck your head in to fix your gaze on the navel center. So it's quite hard to see your navel center, but try to engage and use that Jalandar Bandha, Oriana Bandha together. Now exhale, drop a knee down, rest in child pose. So as I told you before, each and every pose has its benefit. And you won't find the same benefit, like the same, as same as like other posture benefit on the other posture, right? So let's suppose you're doing downward facing dog or uh, mountain. They look similar, but they both have different benefits, like uh, for the stretching, right? So as you're going for the downward facing dog, you will feel different stretch. But as you're here for the mountain, you will feel different stretch, right? In the mountain, you'll be more stable. You're finding the stability. You're pressing your heels on the floor. You will have that stretch from your leg to your hip more than your arms, more than your back. But when you're going for the downward facing dog, you will have that stretch all the way around on the posterior side of your muscles. It means on your back, on your hips, on your uh, hamstring, on your calf, all the way around, right? But in mountain, you're just having that stretch only on your leg 
a little stretch on your spine, but you do not extend your spine, the downward facing dog. Okay. So let's go for the variation from the downward facing dog. Let's make a variation and understand. So do you guys know any variation from the downward facing dog? Yes, Asmita ji. Yes, any variation from the downward facing dog that you know? Three-legged dog? Yeah, yeah, from the downward facing dog, do you have variation like take your right leg up, bring it forward, something like this? Yes. Here. Yeah, so from the downward facing dog, we can get into e, any posture, any posture, like uh, if you want to go for Paschimottanasana, whether you want to go for wild thing, tabletop, or headstand, handstand, or anywhere that you want to, and anything that you want to perform, you can enter into any posture from the downward facing dog. So downward facing dog is the most important posture that we need to learn if you are going for the vinyasa classes because your vinyasa flow that starts from your downward facing dog, right? We have variation in the tabletop also. We have variation uh, uh, by standing too. But from the downward facing dog, you will make a real variation or it will be quite interesting and it will build up your strength too, right? So... In the downward facing dog, as you can see, uh, you can easily find your balance on three legs. Three leg means two hands and one leg, and one leg would be up high in the air, right? So you are going to shift your body weight on your palm, right? So that uh, right leg, uh, right leg weight is going to get shifted over your hands, and then you will build up your strength. So that's how we need to make a creativity. We need that creativity to make a vinyasa. Let's suppose you're taking your right leg up in the air for three leg downward facing dog. Exhale, step your right leg forward between your hands. Take your hands up for the warrior A. So this was quite easy to get there into the warrior A. Very nice. Or high lunge, whatever you'd like to have. Exhale, hands on the floor. And then send your right leg again back for three leg downward facing dog. Reach your left leg, sorry, reach your right leg up. So here in the downward facing dog, again, the same thing. You need to just reach your tailbone high. More than your, more than your hip, just reach your tailbone high. Keep reaching high, make a toes pointed, upper leg pointed up. You can also lift your bottom heel off the floor. You can bend that leg also. You can bend that leg also. Uh, that lower leg, yes, lower leg, bend your lower leg at the knee, bend your lower leg, and then reach your hips, high. press your hands, exhale, then bring your right leg forward, outside of your right palm, outside of your right palm, yes, so this is your lizard pose, outside of your right palm, yes, now look in front, so now I start to sink your hip down, let's do a little stretch, so we have already discussed about downward facing dog and the mountain. So let's stretch out and then start to move your hip down, sink your hip down, up and down. Five, move up and down, continue to move. Four, three, two, and one. Exhale, press your hands on the floor. And then switch your leg with a one jump at a time. Press and switch your leg. Very nice. Now switch left leg forward. And then you step forward outside of your palm. And then you start to sink your hip down again. One, two, 
three, four, and then five. Again, take your left leg up in the air for three leg downward facing dog. Reach high, exhale, step your left leg between your hands for the warrior A. Hips is square to the front of the mat. Keep your hands engaged, look up high, exhale, hands on the floor. Step your left leg back for the mountain or plank or three leg down or facing dog. Now drop your knee, chest in on the floor. Inhale, swing yourself forward. Exhale, roll back for the mountain or downward facing dog. So drop your knee down, rest in child pose or any posture that you like. Okay, let's come up again to the tabletop. Now lean forward into the table, uh, lean forward from the tabletop. Exhale, release back into the center. Exhale again, lean forward. Inhale, back to the center. Again, exhale, lean forward, press your palms, and then hold five, four, three, stay here, and then lift your knee off the floor. Only lift your knee without moving your legs. Only lift your knee, knee, knee up, knee up, feet on the floor for the plank. Yes, for the plank, press your palms. Yes, hold, yes, this is your plank position. Then press your hands and then hold five, four, send your knee back, three, very nice, Four, two, and then one. Now, Chaturanga Dandasan, if it's possible. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, from the downward facing dog, bend your knees. Bring your thighs close to your abdomen. Bring your thighs close to your abdomen. From the downward facing dog, Bring your thighs close to your abdomen. Very nice. Just bend your legs at the knee. Bring your hips more high. And make sure you're not rotating your arms outward. Sorry, not inward. May rotate them outward. Keep pressing your hands on the floor. Elevate them. Shoulders away from the ears. Good job, Karen. Three. Two. And then one. Drop a knee down. Rest in child pose. So have you seen dog when it does this posture? So any question that you want to ask about today's class or Can I ask a question about not an asana? No asana? Okay. Another question? Different? I have a question so, about a mudra. Mudra. Mudra, but I don't teach mudra. I only teaches I only teach us postures. Okay. Asana. Um How about uh, 
and Pashimoda Hanasana. Okay, is Pashimoda Hanasana always seated? Are you always sitting down when you do Pashimoda Hanasana? Yeah, Pashimoda Hanasana is something when we are sitting and it's grabbing our toes. Right. Yes. But um, like Padangustasana is holding your toes. Is that the only difference? I did not get your question. The difference between Padangustasana and Pashimodasana. <laughs> Padangustasana and Pashimodahanasana. So these are the variation, I think. The Pashimodahanasana A, B, C. So what is A, B, C? In Ashtanga, Ashtanga Vinyasa, do you know that uh, when we are starting our sitting postures, then we have got grabbing our toes, interlacing our figure, grabbing our feet from outer edges of our edges of our feet. So yeah. these are the variations. Or variations. Uh, yeah, variations. In Vinyasa, mm -hmm. basically you will have lots and lots of variation into the posture. Like suppose you're doing any downward facing dog, you will get into the posture and you won't have name of it. So right? Pashimutanasana, uh, if a person cannot hold his feet yeah. They, they, they can always bend their knees. See, uh, you should have to like keep in your mind what is the purpose of the posture. Then you can easily understand. Let's suppose uh, if you are a beginner, you do, you cannot get you cannot get into the posture. It's quite because you are quite tight from your muscles. You do not have mobility. Then how are you going to deal with them? You need to use the block. You can always always bend their knees to get your abdomen touched on your thighs, right? So these are the way to get somebody into the posture. So Pashimutan Asana is basically the straightening of spine. Yes, the straightening of hamstrings. You can easily keep your legs straight, right? But you cannot bend forward. We need to, we are going to Pashimutan Asana means Pashim, Pashimutan Asana means waist, waist. Uttanasana is going to stretch out. So basically, so keep spine your spine side is going to get stretched. Yes? So keeping your spine straight and trying to go towards your thighs. To, to a thighs, yes. But if the hamstrings are not flexible, then you can fold the knees. You can fold the knees, yes. See, we are not working uh, in the beginning on the hamstring, in the Paschimottanasana. We are going to work on the spine. So we have a standing forward bend, like right? standing forward bend in that we usually find that stretch on our hips, right? So these like your buttocks muscles and your lower back muscles, they are all together connected to each other. So if you cannot rotate from the hip joint, you cannot bend forward and you won't have that flexibility until unless you move your hip, right? So we need to have that mobility on our hip at the same time when you're bending forward. Okay. So um, to open up the hamstrings, because most of the poses, it really needs your hamstrings flexible. If uh, one doesn't have a flexible hamstrings, then what kind of asana should be performed? Can you take one separate class around alignment class to open up the hamstrings? Yes, yes, we will take. Hmm. All right. Tomorrow, what we are doing? Mm, I don't know. Let's see <laughs> what we are going to do. Any other question, Karen? Um, no? No, I, yeah, I was just looking for the difference between Uttanasana, Pashimadahanasana, and Padangustasana because uh, they can be standing or seated. Right. Okay, you are saying Uttanasana and uh, Arduttanasana and Paschimottanasana. Yeah, Uttanasana is having your 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 yes. thigh towards yes. your 
thigh, your, your chest towards your thighs, just like Pashimoda Hanasana and just like the yes. Dangustasana. So what are the, when do you want to uh, cue or when do you say those different names? Because um, they're, they're all, all three are forward folds. Yes, Uttanasana, yes. Pashimoda Hanasana and Padangustasana. Can, can, can you show me all three postures so that I can okay. also see? All right, well, this is Uttanasana. Yes. Uh, uh, and I, I think this is Padangustasana. Yes, Padangustasana. Padahastasana is another one. <laughs> Many Padangustasana. So it's Padangustasana. It's holding your toe. Ustasana. Yes. Padang. Yes, yes. And then Pashimotanasana. Pashimotanasana. Is Pashimotanasana standing or seated, right? Yes. Okay, so when you're all standing Pashimoda Hanasana, because in hot yoga, this is a Pash, this is a Pashimoda Hanasana. Dandayamana Bhaktapada Pashimoda Hanasana. So tomorrow we are going to talk about this hamstring stretch and these posters also. Okay? Is it okay. fine? Okay, sir. Okay, see you. Bye bye. Enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.